Hai, apa khabar? Khabar baik. Boleh tak awak memperkenalkan diri awak? Saya nama Eliza. Eh, saya dari Itali. Eh, saya gembira berjumpa awak. Okay, very nice uh, Malay pronunciation. <laughs> Thank you. you. Uh, tell me more about your background, where you're from and which uh, city you're from. Sure, so my name is Elisa, as I said, and uh, I'm 24 years old and I'm Italian. And uh, I come from uh, a small town called Imola that is near to Bologna. Maybe you know Bologna, it's famous for the Bolognese souls, uh, salsa la bolognese. And um, Imola actually is quite famous as well because we have the Formula One circuit and also a very ancient uh, castle that dates back to the, to the Sforza period, uh, many centuries ago. And uh, also uh, Bologna is quite famous as well because of the oldest university in Europe, that is also the university where I studied for five years uh, and I studied foreign languages and uh, literatures. Wow, great. Um, so you're from this uh, area and can you uh, explain more any favorite place or the thing that you like to do when you are a student? Yeah, so, uh, so Imola is a very small place, there is not really a lot to do, uh, but in Bologna, Bologna is a really rich, uh, rich city full of things to do and see. There are the two towers and uh, there are many beautiful ancient churches, many uh, historical museums and uh, some really delicious restaurants where the food of course you know that Italian food is one uh, is the best in the world I think so you can really enjoy Italian gastronomy when uh, you have a chance to go around Bologna and uh, find some uh, of those small uh, restaurants and bar, especially in the evening, it's so nice. And uh, also, Bologna is a city full of students like me, and from all over the world, they come to this city. So it's a really interesting place to be in and to travel to because you have a chance to meet people from all over the world and you can uh, enjoy your time having a walk. There are also some really beautiful parks with a lot of nature. And uh, of course, the architecture of the city is interesting as well. And you should know that Bologna is called um, La Città Rossa, that means the red city, uh, as, um, uh, because of the color of the buildings, of course. And it's very particular. It's the only city in Italy that is like this. Wow, I don't know about this, so it's interesting <laughs> and then now I think I, I want to go there. Yeah, you should. <laughs> so, we talk about uh, food a little bit. Uh, what is your favorite food? I know Italia, Italian food is very good and nice and can you share yeah. more about that? Yeah, sure. So, it's very difficult to pick only one dish uh, in Italian gastronomy because everything is so delicious and tasty uh, but i would say my favorite italian dish is uh, parmigiana di melanzane um, and it's difficult to explain exactly what it is but it's made of uh, aubergines tomatoes and mozzarella and people have different uh, recipes for it uh, but i like it better when the aubergines are not fried and uh, also it takes really a lot of time to cook it. Once I tried to prepare it with my mother and it took us two days to, <laughs> to finish it because you have to leave uh, the food, like uh, the aubergines, they need uh, their time like to cool down from the, the cooking and I don't know, but it's really delicious. And uh, of course, I really love pizza. And you should know also about the difference of uh, pizza in the south and in the no north of Italy. So I come from the north of Italy and where I am, usually you eat uh, a very thin and uh, crispy pizza that is not uh, in its original version. Uh, because the original version of pizza, you know, pizza was born in Naples, Napoli, in the south of Italy, in a region called uh, Campania. And there, pizza is always very thick uh, and soft. But uh, I definitely prefer the northern version. 
and uh, then something else uh, of course I love and it's very well known all over the world is gelato ice cream and um, there's no different versions just depends on the on the gelateria uh, the ice cream shop where you go some of them are really good and the quality is very high so the gelato is delicious others are um, are not so good so of course it depends if you can find the best uh, uh, gelateria to go to and then we actually have a very healthy uh, gastronomy I think our food is uh, really balanced between the veggies and uh, carbohydrates and proteins also in my case I love eating food uh, fish and seafood so especially if you go to some uh, towns by the sea you have plenty of options uh, and especially like in the south of Italy in Sicily that is that small island um, in the southwest of Italy and uh, also in Puglia you can really have some uh, good choices for seafood as well oh wow too many things <laughs> to absorb right now <laughs> yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm really impressed so now I'd like to you to explain a little bit about Italian way of conversation or expression because uh, yeah. I always see people like using their hands what, what's the <laughs> yeah this is <laughs> this is a stereotype about Italians but actually it's true but not in my case because as you can see I don't use my hands a lot I'm a very atypical Italian also because I don't drink coffee I don't drink alcohol <laughs> But this is actually something very common for Italians because uh, when we talk, usually we gesticulate a lot and actually from a conversational point of view, it's something uh, really powerful because when you use your hands, you convey a stronger message to the person that is listening to you. It's better to um, talk also with the hands and yeah, with your body, not only with your voice. Uh, for example, my mother, when she talks, uh, she gesticulates so much sometimes. When we are in the car and she's driving, I get very scared because instead of keeping her hands where they should be, she's doing like this, like, Mama, Mom, please <laughs> focus on driving, don't just talk and uh, we may have an accident otherwise. <laughs> and, but there are some gestures that are uh, that maybe you should also know like for example this one is very famous <laughs> and uh, i do it a lot actually it means uh, like what do you want from me like you do this when you're a bit uh, like annoyed by the other person or maybe you don't understand what she wants from you what she's trying to ask from you so you do this or otherwise to say that the food is really good you do like this but <laughs> yeah but it's more something that children do like uh, i wouldn't do it in a restaurant it's not a really uh, something very very elegant to do it it's more informal and uh, other things um, um, yeah of course there are the bad gestures that I will not do <laughs> uh, yeah I think these two are the most famous one yeah thank you for sharing <laughs> okay um, and then you are traveling right now so there must be a beginning of your traveling so can you yeah us? sure so traveling is my biggest passion at all and um, I've always loved traveling so much and I was very lucky because my mother always took me um, to so many places all over the world since I was very young so that is where my interest for discovering new countries started but only now that I finished university I feel completely free to follow this dream and to accomplish it so my biggest dream is to visit every country in the world until now I visited 43 countries and uh, I'm definitely not at the end of my journey, just at the beginning. Um, so I finished university in September and uh, just after finishing university, getting my diploma, 
my big party and celebration. After one week, I bought, uh, I, flew, I, I took a flight to Brazil. And so I was traveling for two months in Brazil and one month in Costa Rica. So three months in South America. Then I came back uh, home for Christmas and then I left again. And this time I will be traveling for many, many more months. I have really no idea about when I will go back to Italy. I think maybe in uh, years, probably, because now I am completely free and I can travel non-stop. So I decided to start with Sri Lanka and uh, I stayed there for one month and uh, then after Sri Lanka I came here to Malaysia. So I decided to start with Sri Lanka uh, actually because what I was looking for was an experience with a Buddhist monastery and uh, through an app, a website that is called Workaway, I found this Buddhist monastery in um, a rural area in uh, the north of Sri Lanka, Anuradhapura. So they accepted me and then I just bought a ticket to this country, even if it was not like on my top list of the countries I wanted to visit. I didn't know much about Sri Lanka, uh, but I think that was really the best decision ever because I really enjoyed my time there, traveling around the country. I've met so many amazing people and I made so many amazing uh, experiences and uh, unforgettable memories that I will always carry with me and uh, I'm sure that uh, the same is going to happen with every country I go to. Also now I've been in Malaysia since uh, two weeks and actually I just stayed in KL in Kuala Lumpur. I, oh no, I also went one, one day to visit Malacca. Um, I didn't explore so much like in, in the country that because I needed some time for myself so uh, after one week exploring Kel and Malacca uh, with uh, this guy that is hosting me through coach surfing, then this other second week I'm just spending it um, um, to take some time for myself to uh, go to the gym, to the swimming pool, uh, read books uh, and most of all write down in my diary uh, all of the experiences that uh, I made and uh, the feelings that uh, I felt and uh, writing down about the people, the places, the emotions, everything. Also, I'm trying to organize my next weeks since uh, on Monday, so in two days I will be leaving KL and I'm going to Cameron Islands and Ipo and then I will go to Georgetown so I needed to make some, some plan about all of this, but I think uh, uh, I will go to do some work away experience and uh, I will be working in uh, some hostels and guest house, adventure parks for a few weeks, like one month in total before coming back to KL for one day to take a bus to go to Singapore next month because my mom is coming to visit me for my birthday. So I will be staying with her uh, one week in Singapore before coming back to Malaysia and traveling more in Malaysia and then he heading to new countries, other countries in Asia. I don't know yet where I will go, but probably Indonesia or uh, South Korea. I don't know in which order, but I will go everywhere <laughs> for sure. Great to listen to your uh, <laughs> bucket list of uh, what you already done and yeah. uh, what you're going to do and I think you have uh, spent a lot of time to uh, research about the countries um, yeah. so you should have some philosophy of what you're looking for while you're traveling like people some traveling for building for famous building traveling for historical building how, how mm. about you Mm. So, in my case, I'm much more interested in nature rather than uh, big cities. So, for example, here I have to say that yes, I like Kel, but it's uh, too much of a huge city for me. Millions of people, all of these buildings and skyscrapers and the traffic jams are really endless. And the smog, the pollution, 
the noises. So it's really not for me. I'm much more of a jungle and nature and beach and mountains person. So that's why now I'm very excited about leaving KL and going to some natural uh, small town in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> near Hippo or near Cameron Islands, I don't know yet. And so that's what I look more when I travel. And uh, also I'm really into uh, spirituality. So that's like one of the reasons why I went to Sri Lanka because I was really interested in Buddhism. And Sri Lanka is a Buddhist country. And so I, I chose to be in this Buddhist monastery in a rural area. And uh, I'm really interested as well in um, creating meaningful and deep uh, relationships with people. Like really having an authentic um, encounter with local people, not only traveling like a tourist, I'm not interested in that at all. I mean, like, of course, uh, I like to visit the uh, important places, like here I went to the Batu Caves, to the Twin Towers, and so on. But what is more uh, attractive for me is to meet the people who live here and really find out about how they live, uh, what's their way of thinking, uh, their culture, their, their language, and uh, their story most of all. So that's also one of the reasons that always pushes me to travel more because I'm a very curious person. I want to learn everything I can and try every experience I can. And so, yeah, these are mainly the reasons why I travel and uh, I'm, I'm really looking for uh, beautiful, wild and lush natural places as well as uh, authentic, uh, authentic villages and authentic towns. For example, uh, in Malaysia I visited Malacca outside of KL and even if it's uh, quite touristic, I still really enjoyed the atmosphere because I find Malacca as a melting pot of cultures and um, you can really meet people from so many Asian countries and uh, also the food is delicious and the buildings, they are small and uh, uh, historical buildings most of all, it's so interesting. I really like uh, these kind of places, mm, definitely more than uh, um, big cities like like uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, the next question it might be overlap with the previous question, but mm -hmm. it's a very simple question. What's the purpose of your life? Okay, the purpose of my life uh, is. <laughs> Oh my God, there are so many things actually, so many goals that I have in my life. Uh, so of course, uh, finding uh, happiness inside of myself and learning as much as possible, discovering the world. One of my goals is to go to every single country in the world. So <laughs> I'm on the way to reach that and I know if, that if I keep traveling like this, with this motivation and determination, I will accomplish it. Also because uh, I came to the point of understanding that if you really want something, you can really obtain, reach it. it it really depends a lot on uh, how much you want it and how much you work towards it. Like all my life I've been told that to travel you need money and uh, as a girl you need a boyfriend who takes care of you and protects you because the world is so dangerous and mean and people uh, may do all kind of horrible things to you and that uh, you need a job. So too many things but actually I found out that it's not true you can if you really want to you can really find a way to and uh, you can really travel everywhere if you are of course you need to be careful and uh, you need to have contacts with the good people that can help you and uh, direct you in the right places but I found out that yes I can travel by myself also I think it's the best way because uh, I get the chance to meet so many amazing people on the way traveling, uh, solo traveling and backpacking. 
uh, because this way you go to hostels and to places where you get uh, to meet people like you, other adventure seekers and the people that are so open-minded and it's really amazing. So yeah, um, the purposes of my life are, uh, apart from traveling, are um, uh, learning as many languages as I can. Uh, for the moment I can speak fluently five languages, which are of course Italian and English, but also French, Spanish and Portuguese. And I'm trying to learn some German and here are some Malay. I really want to learn Japanese and Chinese and Hindi and Arabic and so many other languages. And I'm sure that if I go to live in one of the countries where they speak these languages and I put effort in it, uh, I will be able to learn at least a little bit. <laughs> and then the other purposes. Uh, so about my career, I really want to become a, a travel journalist and a writer and uh, this is something I always wanted since I was very young. So that's why also I decided to study literature at university because I'm really into, into writing and reading. I read a lot of books. like. Uh, usually I read four or five books every month. I really try to, to force myself, even if I'm tired sometimes, because it's a, it's a pleasure, but also something I need to, something I think is good for me to do. And uh, this also helps me to, to become a better writer. And uh, so I, when I was in Italy, I was actually already working as a journalist for a local newspaper of my hometown, of Imola. And the newspaper is called Il Nuovo Diario Messaggero. That means uh, the new messenger diary, something like this. And I really enjoyed the experience of working there for three years. I mean, it was not a big job. It was just a collaboration. I would write maybe one, two articles per week, but it was still really amazing because I could meet uh, so many interesting people. I was having the chance to interview them and to ask questions that most of the time you cannot ask because you know, you cannot ask uh, to important people or to artists like uh, which are your dreams or which are your difficulties and you you may not even even mm, never be able to meet them in uh, normal life. So I really felt uh, uh, to be in a privileged position uh, to work as a journalist and also because uh, I love writing and it was really exciting every time for me to sit down at my desk and uh, write the article with all the calm of the world and then the next week find it in the newspaper with my name it was i was really proud of this so um, that's why i i want to become a journalist and uh, write about the things that uh, matter the most for me so of course about the traveling uh, about uh, the stories of the people that i meet along the way because most of the time traveling I meet really interesting people who really have something to share with the world. So for example, when I was in that Buddhist monastery, I decided to interview the main monk of the monastery. And um, right now I'm finishing this article for my blog. And I have many projects in my mind. And I decided that now that I will be traveling like this, solo traveling across Asia for months without a job. <laughs> I think I will give uh, uh, a lot of time and put a lot of effort into this, into uh, finding stories, interesting stories along the way and um, write uh, good articles in English for my blog. And maybe I will also look for some uh, jobs for some um, online newspaper, for example, I know there is a famous newspaper in Italy called um, L'Internazionale, that is the international, that covers uh, um, subjects and topics uh, from all over the world. So uh, I'm sure I could write something about 
I don't know, some uh, cultural or even uh, soci sociological or uh, political subject or uh, about any country I visit. So yeah, maybe I will give it a try or I don't know. Uh, there are so many options when you travel like this and also um, when you speak many languages, that is something that really helps me out a lot and uh, I could uh, work as a translator, I could do so many things. <laughs> Thank you for sharing <laughs> and um, I'd like to listen to authentic Italian speaking Italian. <laughs> so this is my chance, so maybe you can share something in Italian. <laughs> yeah, of course. So. Uh, I know Italian is very different from Malay, so maybe you will not understand. Uh, but I can say um, something about me, about uh, my philosophy of life. Um, dunque, <laughs> so I'm. Um, there, there are some words that I really like that are uh, libertà. Uh, that means freedom and uh, there's a word that recently always come up to my mind that is vagabonda and nomade that means vagabond and nomad it's because these three words are what uh, are um, is what is really inspiring me lately because i'm living this lifestyle of being completely free and traveling uh, free from everything, from uh, attachments to people and to things like to, to travel this way I had to leave behind me so many things and I don't know sometimes it's scary, it's frightening but uh, it feels like really liberating to, to be completely libera, to be, to be completely free so I left behind me my family, my house, my, my boyfriend, my friends, my country, my things, my cats, my clothes, everything, literally, I'm traveling with so little things and um, sono veramente felice adesso perché mi sento libera, perché posso fare tutto quello che voglio e posso realizzare tutti i miei sogni perché ci credo veramente e, e so che li, li realizzerò. That means that uh, I'm very happy uh, because I, I feel so free and I feel that I have the power and the willingness to realize all of my dreams and that if I really want to, I will. <laughs> Grazie! <laughs> Thank you so much for this interview. I wish you uh, good luck for your future undertakings. Thank you. Thank you very much. Terima kasih. Grazie.